Hello, and welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, Director of Sales for Bone Adhesives. And I'm Rob Johnson from The Bone Training. How are we doing, Rob? I'm doing really good. Really That's good. cool. How about yourself? Um, I'm doing good, too. Were you home this week or were you on the road? I am home this week. Yep. Well, I got three weeks of on the road coming up. So, um, today I thought we would talk about, or you thought we would talk about, uh, you know, going to trade school versus going to college. Mm-hmm. First of all, I would not, do not use this as your deciding factor on what you want to do in life. The, Robin Wayne said, yeah, I'm I, sorry. Wayne and Rob said, thank you. Um, yeah, because you can't say Robin Wayne because it sounds like one no. person. Yeah, plus it's in the contract. Like Robin Williams, Robin Wayne. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Wayne and Rob, and yeah, yeah, yeah corporate stooge versus the working man. I yeah. get it. Well, it's a good example here. This is yeah. a perfect example. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Exactly. You know, it's a tough question whether it makes more sense to go to trade school or go to college. And it's a much broader question, I think, than just, you know, finance. Um, You know, it could be, you know, you maybe want to go to college to be more well-rounded. Although you're pretty well-rounded. You never went. Oh! Oh, Oh, I'm Look, what? Oh! No, hey! Oh, a weight jump from Slim. Did you? You must be losing (laughs) weight again. Is that it? Every time you start to lose weight, here come the fat jokes, everybody. I, 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 Wayne's losing weight again. Did you think that was a fat joke? Oh my gosh, I don't know well why. Well rounded. I'm, I'm sorry. You <laughs> no, listen. Um, it's, You're gonna tell me I'm big. I know. I look, look, look. I, I, I got mirrors pot, in my house. The pot calling the kettle, kettle black. Yeah, no uh, kidding. Yeah. But well, okay. I mean, are, you, be are you working out? And uh, no, no, I'm losing all weight kinds. again. Listen, you feeling no, I, strong, my friend? I got all kinds of problems. Yeah, no. yeah. No. Hey, hey, listen. I know. I'm an easy target. I know. No, no. Look, yeah, you, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's all got, right. I could take a punch. All right. I'm 62. As it was my birthday last week. 62. Come on. Nothing bothers me anymore. It was your birthday last week. Yeah, I was born in 1962, and I'm 62. Last wow. Thursday was wow. my birthday. Yeah, I'm still looking for a card or something. Uh, I, I, didn't, sur- I didn't see anything yet. The mail's slow. I'm surprised that the mail hadn't got it to you. Yeah. It's rid- ridiculous. Me too. Um, so anyhow, uh, but, but uh, I, you know, one is, uh, is the finance, you know, um, you know, obviously. Can um, I say something first before we yeah. go down this road? Yeah. First off, I want to say that in no way, and I think I speak for both of us, for no, there's no way that you and I are anti-education. No. Okay? There, uh, please don't think that we're anti-education. N- not at all. But I have seen, you know, family, friends, and sometimes college just college wasn't for them you know Mm -hmm. so it's not that i'm anti-education sometimes i just don't think that you know that college is the answer for everybody and and that's why i wanted to talk to you about uh, that's why i was talking to you about doing this episode because um i'm just so pumped i mean we've always thought that there's just such a you know we can't get anybody in the trades anymore and man i think i think the tide is starting to turn and a lot of this is just what i'm seeing at my own classes my own schools well here's the thing um i think the tide has has turned and here's the reason why i think uh you know like at the turn of the century like let's say half a century ago or whatever after world war ii I think the amount of people graduating from college was like 7% of people went on to college and graduated. I think it's, I think it's well over 40% now. And it's a matter of supply and demand in some regard. 
You know what I mean? When everybody's, everybody's, you know, and everybody, you know, taking those soft jobs or whatever, where they're not having to do physical work and what have you. And, 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 um, 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 in some, some, some ways, I think some people feel like manual labor is beneath them. You know what I mean? They've been, and they, we've been taught. And I honestly, I think a bit of a lie from the education, uh, the educators in in this country that uh, you have to have a four year degree, you have to go to college, that it's beat into people's heads and and it's very expensive and and by the way, a lot of people are realizing now that like if you were if you were to go to be a secretary for instance back in the fifties and sixties, you needed a high school education to do that job. You and now those need to know how to type. Yeah, now those same jobs are requiring a four year degree. Why? I I don't I, I a lot of these. I think there are people realizing that you don't need that and especially depending on what degree you get coming out of college, you know, I mean, some degrees are, let's face it, you know, anthropology, not a lot of, not a lot going on there, you know? Uh, and so I think it's a lot about supply and demand. And like you said, the, the trades are dying right now. Not and, that um, we have anything about you people with your anthropology degrees. We're proud of you. Yeah. You, yeah. you put in four years of tough work and mm -hmm. now um, we're going to show you how to sand floors so you can make some money. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's a tough one. I think there's a lot of reasons for, and I can definitely see the reason for going to college to really to broaden your horizons and learn a, a lot of different. I mean, I, I get that if you can afford to do that, I, I, you know, I can understand that part of it and that college life or what have you um in, in some ways now that's just become an extension of high school i i think guys i really hate saying these things i don't because i don't want to i i don't want to um i'm just I have, I, you, well uh, i'm just letting you talk that's all no, i'm gonna do oh, I listen, I, let you go no i remember really, I said we're not anti-education no we're not and not i have one a lot, bit it, one thing it does it shows it shows a drive and everything to complete something and you know if it's a worthwhile degree i think that the holy smokes man that's impressive um even if it's a not a worthwhile degree if you can afford it, it shows they could do something stick it out for four or six years that's yep. okay mm -hmm. that's okay no, i'm not, not. going to ask you i'm not even going to ask you what you think worthless degrees are because you'll probably well i can tell you you'll probably tell us yeah oh i know you're dying to what a, you already I threw the, all the anthropologists under the bus where would we be without those there'd be no jurassic park movie remember that i know a guy that went to school for a musical degree like for 10 years i'm not kidding really and, and 10 I'm, years yes yes i'm not making that up and so what's that in 10 years? Is he a professor? No, he works at Target, I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious. Um, not that there's anything wrong. Not, not a thing wrong with Target, work at Target, 100%. As long as he gets up and goes to yep. work. Yeah. You see where, look, Highlander, you see where we got to go with this? Yeah. Okay? I, I, I listen. <laughs> I'm saving your ass here. Remember that? No, okay. that's why this is a tough episode yeah. for me because I have a lot of respect. I, I have no way. Neither one of us are no Unless way. Unless you work at Target or you're well, an anthropology major. Well, to go to college to work at Target, this, you, it, stop! Listen, you're killing yourself. Listen, you're killing that, yourself. No, no, no. Because I can justify that. Because at that point, it's it's you. You put it down on paper. You know, the, the, the investment of, and that's, that's the other thing. These kids are coming out of college saddled with a massive debt in a lot of time, in a lot of cases with a tremendous amount of debt versus a guy that, I mean, I, I know guys that have, that I have several friends now that are uh, linemen, for instance, that uh, when they have a storms, they go out and they, they do the electricity mm -hmm. and everything. Holy smokes. Those guys make a lot of money and right out of high school. And uh, with that really hard, much education at all, I mean, just high school education and, they, you know, the trades, the trade teams learn about electricity and make a tremendous amount of money. Yeah, sure, they could die in a storm. There's that. But, um, but uh, I mean, really, versus that, if you took that no, wait, kid, wait, wait, I'm, I'm just scratching linemen. Uh, yeah. I don't want to yeah. be a lineman. Yeah. That's a death sentence. 
Or you take that guy or a welder right out of high school that starts making money versus a kid that in, in four years time, he's just racked up debt in four years. And again, maybe it's worth it. Maybe because I've seen other studies that say, okay, as someone that's gone to college with a four year degree over, over like 25 years has made like $250,000 more than the person that hasn't gone to college and what have you. I think that's changing now because the trades are dying so much and there's so much work in the trades and what have you. But the cost of an education now is, is extremely high. And I really blame a lot of these colleges uh, for doing this and promising these kids. Um, so. Yeah, all the college loans didn't lower the price of college tuition. So if, if you look at some of the advantages of going to the trade, going and working in the trades, a lot of people are not like like you said um a lot of people are not not designed to work in an office building all day and they want to do something creative with their hands and that that is just much more fulfilling to them uh but you know what it, it's kind of like remember 2007 when the economy was really bad and i would talk to flooring contractors and the ones that didn't have a retail store like they worked out of their garage and whatever they would go man I should have, I should have got a retail store. You know, that was my mistake. I should have, I, you know, I should have done that. And then I would talk to guys that had a retail store and they go, you know what? It was a mistake having a retail store. You know, I'm spending all this money. I, I shouldn't have invested. I should have just stayed, saved that money and worked out. I kept working out of my garage. And I, maybe it's the same thing for, uh, for, for the, the argument going to college and not going to college. And a lot of it is what is your, what, what you're suited for. I, I, look, I we both know guys that they were just made they were going into the trades there's no two ways around there that's just they were just they were wrenching on stuff when they were kids that they they didn't do good in school and they were just going to be that guy did you and, go to uh, trade school or did you just go to regular high school no regular high school with are they, with they, well I'm you sure bounced they, around a lot so i went i was going to say i went to so many high i went to four different high schools and i think only one of them had a trade school I really think it's it's one of the biggest crimes in this country is that we don't have trade schools for the kids, because again we set it up where it's 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 all designed to go to college for four years or nothing, and I think that there should be like give them give them an opportunity to go into these other these other avenues and teach them something of value. Honestly, I think even further than that, I think we should teach kids more about money uh about financing and, and saving money and compound interest and stuff like that and 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 uh uh more life skills than 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 they come out of college i think or high school now with very little life skills i think you know what i mean um i'm shocked how many come out that don't drive yeah that that always seemed strange to me yeah, I mean, that, we we couldn't. Uh, wait. I mean, I have some was... good friends and family that, yeah, you know, their their kids are well out of high school and still don't have any interest in getting their license, which I thought yeah. was kind of. Yeah, but I don't want to sound like you and start raking on the kids. Okay, I don't well, want to go there with that. You know, it'd be easier. Like, it'd be isn't it an easy conversation if I had kids? You know what I mean. I don't have kids, but this conversation with me for for kids would be real easy. My kids, but everybody's <laughs> d- different. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why. That's why when I retire, I want to mentor kids. I want to. I, 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 that is part of my what I want to do when I get out of when I when I when I retire. I want to mentor you know. kids. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Why wait? I got time for the little kids right now, man. I got things to do. <laughs> okay. You don't waste my time talking to the little kids. I got nothing to say. Uh, but when I when I when I stop, I'm going to be a, a hell of a mentor to somebody, or I'll be in prison. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's get this show back on. Let's get this thing back on track here. Yeah. All right. The trade schools. Mm -hmm. Here's why I wanted to do it. I I was, um, like I said, I did a sports school this week and about 20, my gosh, 23 years ago, I met a guy who was, he was brand new into the sport business. And I was kind of brand new uh, working for a manufacturer. 
So we were both kind of buddied up because we were both kind of new to the whole thing, both of us, you know. So we kind of grew into our roles together. We we're, you know, we did a lot together. Great guy. Mm -hmm. He sent his kids to me this week. He sent his kids up to a to a sports school. They live no in kidding. Boston, and uh, he sent his kids to me for for a school. They just graduated college, and they both got I think they both got business degrees. They were telling me, and they had one other their buddies, who's you know kind of joining the business, and uh, so there's a there's a little of your education right. Where yep. we're not anti-education, yeah. his boys got a good business degree, and now they're getting into the business, the sport well, business. I, did you say something smart right there? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> All completely yeah. by mistake, huh? No, uh, listen, I, I think that is the smartest thing. If you, if, if I, if I was going, I, I tell you what, I would do this. If I, even if I knew I was going into the trades, if I had a kid. And um, he, I was going to advise him to do something. I would tell him to go to school and take business classes. And then if you want to get into the trade, get into the trades. Because you then know your worth, how to, how, how to figure out a profit and loss, how to pre figure out margins and figure out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that, that would be the number one thing I would teach you. Again. Even if you think you want to be a carpenter or a, a floor mechanic or whatever, do that first get that much done and it will uh, that will man what that could do to your career would that that would be well well worth it and and that would 100 percent think you get behind that it's words and music that's what it is yeah it's words and music now they got their business education now they're getting the the hands-on what yeah. how do they do the business and these guys i tell you what too these kids were awesome to work with a blast we had a, a lot of fun a lot of you know but um man were they coachable too they're they're both wrestlers their dad was a wrestling coach and you want to talk about kids that were coachable show up early taking notes i, I mean they were just and i have noticed um you know i think i i think when we did our christmas school last year i was looking around the room and i'm like there's a lot of father and sons in here. Mm -hmm. And some of the guys were bringing kids like, you know, 14 or 15 years old. My son sent me a picture this week of him and his five-year-old. And his five-year-old is rolling a buffer into a house, carrying the best toolbox and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. And uh, so that's why I wanted to kind of do something uh you know i think it's not all doom and gloom for the younger generation because i also that story that you sent me i remember seeing that the other day like trade schools are starting to fill up union mm -hmm. halls people are joining unions again yeah. people are looking to like hey you know what it's it hit rock bottom i think where you know nobody can find any labor but people are starting to make money and they're starting to see this is a hell of a way to make some money yeah, I'll tell you, when I see a young kid and he's got work boots on, dirty jeans and a t-shirt on, whatever, he's, and I know this kid is a hardworking kid and he takes his job seriously and he's learning a trade and whatever and he's a stand-up guy, I have a world of respect for that kid. When I see a kid, the same kid, and he's going to college and he's sharp and he's you know he's learned so many different things and he's on his way and everything i have an equally amount of respect for that kid i don't have one versus the other you know what i mean like i think where labor was looked down on uh you know when we were growing up like you know the guy this guy's going to college this guy's going this guy's works he's a late in the labor's union you know like poor poor guy you know this this guy's successful yeah. this, this guy's not i don't i don't see that anymore when I see a young kid in the trades and he and he takes it seriously and he's learning and he and he's uh and he's taking his job seriously and I see that kid I would I, I think damn I'm proud of that kid man look at him you know what I mean uh and it makes me proud of him and I feel I I don't feel one bit difference from one versus the other um so I I think maybe the the tide has changed a little bit in that regard I 
definitely think so. I mean, I just look at, like I said, I, I'm just looking at, and I was going through um, some of my student lists from, from like the Christmas school in December. And I was like, man, we have got, I'm seeing a shift and, and the people who are coming to the schools and they're younger, like mm -hmm. late teens, early twenties type younger. I mean, every time, every time we're doing something up in Canada, it's the same way. It's young guys, right. That are looking to get into the trades, which, you know, I don't think I saw this six or seven years ago, but I'm definitely, and that's, I noticed it at our schools. And then, like I said, when I saw that stuff in the news the other day about trade schools, union halls, people are starting to, you know, head back to it. I was like, yeah, I definitely, I definitely think stuff is starting to come around. And, and you mentioned this on a, on a show previously, and I agree with it. And I love to see it too, is you're seeing a lot of young women now getting in the trades, driving trucks, uh, taking on these jobs that, that they maybe wouldn't have done 20 years ago and they're excelling at it. And it's a, could be a phenomenal trade, uh, um, 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 opportunity for them, career opportunity for them to get in the trades. And, um, gosh, man, I remember when I was in labor's union back in the seventies, late seventies, early eighties, you'd see one women out of 400 con, con, uh, uh, construction mm. workers. And I'll tell you something, it was a tough life for them. I can tell you firsthand, I know that because I worked with, I worked with, I can think of a, a girl I worked with right now, Roberta, man. And I, I know she caught a lot of crap for being in that industry as a, as a female. And I don't think it's that way anymore. I, I'm sure it is to some degree. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but I, I think it's not <laughs> like, like, like it used to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's more accepting because they damn sure better be because we need, we need people in the trades. And, uh, and I think that's a good sign to see that. Well, I've even I've even seen that switch in the bonus schools where, you know, the some of the gals who used to come to the school were in sales and just were there to kind of learn the lingo and see what the guys are doing out in the field where now, no, we're, you know, they're working yeah. they're they're on cruise, they're yeah. going on cruise, they're starting businesses. So, yeah, I. I definitely agree. So I want you to, I said something earlier that we just kind of went by it, but I was, I'm going to, I'm going to hit it again. When I said, I see it, when I see a kid and he's in jeans and he's got a t-shirt on and he's in the trades, you know, I, 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 and he takes his job seriously. I have a lot of respect for that guy too, but, but I put a big emphasis on takes his job seriously because to me, you can be a, you can be a dummy this whole world will let you be a dummy. You know what I mean? It'll be very easy. Nobody will get in your way of being a dummy. You can be that guy very easily and nobody will stop you. Or you can, you can, you can take this job and, and be a Steve Seabaugh, to be a, 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 a Lenny Hall, be, be some of these, be, be somebody great, be a Jason Elquist and so many other great guys I can think of out there. And, and that don't happen by accident. It don't happen because you've been doing this for 20 years. That don't make you smarter. It happens because you get out the NWFA guidelines and you study them. It happens because you go to these classes at the Boner class, or NWFA class, and you learn, you go to the expert classes and you learn and you want to get better and you want to get better. You buy better tools, you show up on time, you do what you're supposed to do. That I, I equate with the same thing as a guy getting a college education. But if you're showing up and doing a half job, then you're just, that's, that's different that, to me. And that, that, that is where I see the difference. Um, I know that might be harsh to some people, but that's the way I see it. And I'll tell you something else. I, I wrote that, I wrote that quote down. That's a, I've never heard that one before either. What's that? And I even wrote your initials and the year. Hmm. I, I might have that put on a shirt for you. <laughs> what did I say? You can be a dummy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, well, that is, that, that's I, a Highlander I, original. 2024 you can be a dummy yeah well it's a fact you are uh, you should have been a songwriter or something uh, you really should have yeah you got a gift my friend thank you you um, got a gift i'll i'll tell you something else and this is going to be controversial too oh <laughs> but but if i had a daughter 
Uh, I would tell her never depend on a man. That's my own thing. And that's my own. I would say, make sure you get an education or whatever, or get you don't put in your situation where you, where you have to depend on somebody else for your, for your, for your whatever. Because I don't, uh, men aren't men anymore. <laughs> you, you, oh, man. All right. Sorry, we just All burned right. the whole, we just burned the whole thing down. We just, we just burned, yeah, we, exactly. No, we just burned the whole Thanks, thing down. Thanks everybody for listening to Bona's last <laughs> on the floor show. I love it. Wait a minute. <laughs> don't gotta, depend on a man. You gotta hit that. And men aren't men. Don't depend on a man. And men aren't men. Chris, anymore. you gotta cut you gotta cut that whole thing out. Men, oh no. This we stays. Can't. No, no, we can't. no way. Listen, I'm gonna back you up on that. Wait. I'm gonna back you up, okay? Okay. I'm coming I'm coming in for you. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll both get fired together. Men aren't men anymore. <laughs> you are awesome. All right. Can I, t- can I tell you something? Wait a minute. The other okay. day I saw Seinfeld being interviewed and he said the same thing. He goes, there's no more real men. He goes, you know, Hmm. Muhammad Ali, JFK, Howard Cosell. (laughs) I'm thinking he just named off some of the craziest names for men aren't being men anymore. Yeah. And the, and they said to him, well, do you think you're a man? He goes, nah, not really. Kinda, (laughs) but no, not. So you're right up there. You're right up there with Seinfeld. Okay, men aren't you, men anymore. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll let people know that when I'm applying for my next job. Uh, <laughs> I was. Uh, how, how, you're older than me, right? How old are you? Yeah, 64? Yeah, 60, 63. How dare you? 63. 63. Yeah. And when's your birthday? July. <laughs> two, months, <laughs> two, two months away. <laughs> Son, that's a, that's yeah, my grandson's. Like, uh, yeah. uh, Papa, I'm, I'm seven yeah. and a half. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh my bad. Right. Yeah. So you'd be sixty four in yeah. two months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you do fill out that job application for your mm-hmm. next job, uh-huh. I just want to tell me where you are. I want to be in the parking lot for that one. All right. Because I know you know. Yeah. Everybody's looking for that sixty four year old to. Mm-hmm. Uh, Just take uh, the world by the storm. <laughs> it's a 23 year old that interviews me. Um, but well, listen, when I say uh, when I say that, I'll tell you and God strike me dead. Uh, yesterday, I was at a restaurant and I've gone to the same. Re- I'm going to tell you something about where I live real quick. I was in a restaurant the other day. I've gone to this restaurant over the last three or four years off and on, you know, here and there, whatever. But in the, if, if, you're, if I'm there in the morning at the same time, about six in the morning, there's an old guy that pushes his wife in a wheelchair in every morning. She, he's got to be late seventies and his wife is obviously about the same age. She's in a wheelchair. He pushes her in that wheelchair every, every day. Every time I go in there, I see him in a wheelchair, goes in a corner, his, her food comes, he cuts up her food and, and, um, uh, you know, get, gets, you know, takes care of her or whatever. And then I was in there, uh, I think two days ago, two days, this Thursday, two days ago. And he was in there by himself. And uh, I asked the waiter, I said, uh, that guy's wife passed away. He goes, yeah. So I said, oh, shit, that's sorry. That's, I said, oh, that's too bad. So I went over and I said, hey, man, I said, I, 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 um, I just want to say, I understand your wife passed away. I see you come in here all the time and I'm, I'm really sorry to see that. I said, you're kind of a role model to me, man, on how to, how to treat your wife. That's very, very nice that you see. I used to come in, push her in a wheelchair and everything and everything. And he goes, that's, he goes are you going to use that salt? I go, what? <laughs> He goes, you going to pass the salt down. I go, yeah, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You there, got there's that your going. salt. Yeah. And, yeah. and you yeah. got that going for you. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, all right. So yeah, I don't. Just, just give me the salt and shut up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know you. You don't know me. Yeah. Uh, I don't, yeah. I don't, uh, well, I know he was like. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll say that. Anyhow, all right. I was, so, I was hoping he'd say something like that's not my wife. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pushed her off a cliff. Uh, <laughs> so. Who do you think put her in the chair? Yeah. Oh, oh, come on. All right, we gotta stop that. All right. Um, 
So I think we covered that uh, completely. Um, well, to finish it, if we're, we're going to finish it up, don't depend on a man. I just, that's so funny. Remember, girls, remember what Wayne said. Don't depend on a man. Go out there and make it for yourself. Make it out there by yourself. We should uh, give a whole disclaimer on this whole episode, as a matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're... I'm going to make Pauline listen to this. Hey, Wayne's ashamed of you. Why? <laughs> for depending on you? Depending on me. Well, so boy, you... Boy, did you back the wrong horse, Pauline. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> no, but, but um, I, mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, you're fine. You're yeah. fine. That's right. good advice. Yeah. All right. What else, Rob? Um, well, I just thought that I wanted to talk this out because uh, we've had some, you know, we've had through the years. Uh, everybody's like, oh, my gosh, the labor shortage and what are we going to do and everything. But I don't know what I've been seeing. You know, like I said, past year. I think things are starting to come around and boy, just what I'm seeing at the schools and the kids who are coming to the schools are, they're there. You, they're your kind of kids. They're kids mm -hmm. you'd want to mentor that type nice. of kid where they nice. are. You know, the first thing these kids said to me too, was uh, these kids at the gym school was like, um, can I have a, do you have notepads, notebook, I, you know? And I was like, Oh boy, here we go. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. So at sports schools now too, I just show the power drive because in the, in certain situations you, in a gym, you will never have to use an edger if you have yeah. a power drive. Okay. Yeah. You, there's no edging ever. Mm -hmm. So at sport, the, some of the sport trainings I've been doing, I've just been showing the uh, power drive just because a lot of guys in the sport, you, you know, they don't, follow the same stuff that that we're seeing things like that and uh so i had a good mix of some new guys young guys and some older you know some older guys at this school and so i'm just kind of showing a power drive and uh, one gentleman says well i'm not gonna do a, I'm not gonna do a whole gym with that thing and <laughs> <laughs> i was like well no of course <laughs> you know yeah of course not you know but then as soon as he said that, one of the new kids who's been in the business a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. they, they've seen the job. They've been on the job in the summers and everything. He says, yeah, we're not going to sand a whole gym. He said, but, you know, we do stages. We do classrooms. We do the cubbies. We do the ed entranceways. We do this. We do that. And I'm just, I just step back. Wow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I just step back and he goes and imagine. And he looked at the other kid. He's like, no wedging. We don't yeah. have to edge anymore. Wow. Imagine that, right? And yeah, yeah. I'm not saying a word, right? Wow. I am not saying a word. I'm like, this is freaking beautiful. I love, and the old, and then the old guy's like, oh yeah, I didn't think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. Oh but, my uh, gosh. That's it. The new generation coming in, man. The the whole new world opened up for them. No doubt about it. Um, all right, Rob. So I guess everybody just, you know, everybody has to determine their own, uh, their own path and what they want to do in this world. Just something to think about, uh, that they are, they're the, the very, trades are coming back, coming back. A lot of lucrative jobs trades in the trades. are coming back. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, take some business classes. If you, uh, if you're going to get that, go that direction, I would 100% do that before you do anything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. The, absolutely. That's yep. the way to go. Yeah. Now you get the best of both worlds. Absolutely. All right, Rob. Well, I think we uh, uh, figured that out. I think out. you've insulted probably three quarters of the nation. You did a good job. Yeah. Good for you. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Straighten up. All right. You got the educated. You got the uneducated. You got mm -hmm. yeah. You get you nailed everybody. Got, got good everybody. Job. Yeah. You yeah. Did, you got everybody. <laughs> One fell swoop. <laughs> All right. And for any kids looking for a mentor. Yeah. 
Wayne.Highlander at Boner.com. Shoot him an yeah. email. Yep. You there heard you it know. here. He wants to be a mentor. Yeah. I was a little scared. <laughs> okay, kid. I was a little scared the first time Bum called you. I'm like, oh, no. I'm never going to hear the end of it. Mm -hmm. Wayne said to do it this way. Wayne said to do it yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, good kid. I enjoy talking to him. Oh, they're all good kids. They're all hard workers, too. Yeah. Uh, but when the other thing I liked, too, about these younger guys, too, man, they're on time, early, excited. Nice. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's so. cool, man. So important. So important. Attitude, man. The attitude, the showing up on time, being present is so important. Uh, you, you, just can't, you just can't say it enough. Um, so that's pretty cool. All right. All right, Rob, thank you for everything. And, um, this has been another episode of on the floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for another episode. Mm -hmm.